We came together to form Tech Beach in 2016 with a, a very simple vision based on our shared experiences as entrepreneurs in the Caribbean, trying to do things differently. Um, you know, Kyle and I realized that there were some gaps in the ecosystem. Uh, the story goes beyond that, however, in, in that we met in about 2014, 2013 or 2014. Uh, back then, Kyle had a, a business that he can share a bit more on. But in the tech space, he was probably the most progressive entrepreneur, him and his co-founders, um, in the region, having raised a significant level of corporate venture capital from a large organization in the market. And over time, I tried to say to Kyle and team a couple, on a couple of occasions, you know, guys, there's a need for us to build a space that is, um, you know, collecting people with shared visions, shared intelligence to create a brighter future. Uh, but I think with all that was going on, and, and he can touch on this, they, they weren't really able to embrace what I was trying to suggest. So fast forward to late, well, late 2015 into 2016, the company faced some challenges and, you know, one day, Somewhat serendipitously, Kyle and I were speaking, and I said to him, you know, bro, the challenges that you've experienced are, are not of your doing, right? The, the business met hiccups because there are gaps in the ecosystem. And what I've been trying to share with you as a vision is this idea of filling the gaps, right? Now, one important thing to note about Tech Beach from I think both of our perspectives is even the way I'm articulating this now, I couldn't, I couldn't even say that to Kyle back then. I really didn't have this way of packaging the story in terms of what ultimately we wanted to do uh, or how it, would, how it would manifest. But the vision was, was pretty simple. Can you bring the resources necessary for people to build successful enterprises that are innovating in the market together and those resources need to be not just local, not just regional, but in fact global. And can you leverage the infrastructure that the Caribbean has successfully built, which is tourism, right? Beautiful beaches, wonderful hotels, um, you know, this all-inclusive experience to create something one of a kind that allows people con to connect in a way that they're simply not used to. Does that capture it? Yeah, I, I think so. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure where, where to fit in now. Just say more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 Karishma, go ahead. Say again, yes, say again. Corey just asked us to tell the story. The introduction is done. Yeah, like what you did on yeah. Thursday. Cool. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you're the co but how does this, how did this fit into what you want to accomplish? Yeah. What was the genesis where you come to connect it back to yeah. the and why it's so important for this ecosystem to exist? Okay. So just like you said the other night, like you weren't initially too sold on it, but then the business ended up in these issues and you started to realize like, oh shit, like these are the actual problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Let's go. You know, you could say something when you're just chilling and talking, but when you're in front of a camera, you feel like you need to be perfect. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so, you ready? Hearing me clearly, I'm looking at the camera. All right, cool. 
Yeah, there's your mic. Yeah, there's your mic. There's your mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. All right, so, so, so the ethos of Tech Beach began because, yeah, the ethos of Tech Beach came from us being entrepreneurs, right? Um, my experience as a technology entrepreneur, one of the earliest stage on, uh, technology entrepreneurs in the Caribbean with a company I founded called First. Uh, we managed to raise about $2 million from Digicel. Um, and that, at that time, and even now, that being a significant figure. Um, and we still didn't win. And so there's a perception in the Caribbean that once I get the money, I'm going to win, right? Oh, if this investor could give me this money or write this check, I'm for sure going to be a millionaire and change the market, right? But my understanding now compared to then is that we lack an ecosystem to support the growth of companies that are being built in the region, right? And so what is that ecosystem? That ecosystem is other founders that you're being connected with that are solving similar problems to you, facing similar challenges, and going together, solving the problems together. The other piece of the equation is investors. Multiple investors that go beyond just my single investor or single investor, Digicel. Mentors, advisors, partners. A full ecosystem of players that understand the vision of what, what your company, what your startup is trying to accomplish, what problem you're trying to solve, and collectively working together to see the mutually beneficial opportunities that exist to really just solve problems in the region and progress the region. And so in 2016, Kirk and myself sought out to solve that problem. How do we create community? How do we create that environment, that energy, that people enter a space and ask, how can I help? How can I support you? How can we do something together that's going to change the way that we experience a life today, tomorrow, and the future in the Caribbean? Go ahead. That's how you were done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, cool. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, yeah, I think, I think Kirk and I come from, uh, from two, very, two very similar foundational value systems. Good, uh, yeah, two similar foundational values. So you might not include all of this, but I'm just speaking off the top of my head, right? Right, yeah. So Kirk and I come from two very similar value systems. Uh, our parents are, are, are deeply spiritual and, and, and coincidentally Christian. And I think some of, a lot of that really helped to create a level of balance in our relationship because in the way that we see each other, appreciate each other, and then go forward in how we want to create value, there was a natural mutual alignment that existed there. And so a lot of the times people draw reference to business partners like a marriage. And, and anyone looking on at our relationship many times refer to us as a married couple. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what I said. You might not want to include everything. <laughs> right? I'm just speaking off the top, right? Right? Um, and, 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 and the way that we operate has been, has been as, as, as that really from, from a, a marriage of a value system, a marriage of vision of, of the way that we see the world and how we would like to change the world together. And I think that has been, it's been amazing to see what we've been able to do together. And, and I remind them all the time that, um, that, that we, were, we were called to do this now. And this is our time. And independent of what is happening outside of us, this is our blessing and this is our calling and we are walking in our purpose. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. For sure. So, <clears throat> so initially, for a while, as I shared with Kyle what I wanted to achieve or what we what we needed ultimately, uh, you know, it wasn't fully connecting how it would look, and for a good while there was a struggle to really put the vision out in terms of, you know, this is missing, but how do you fix it, right? I attended a conference in Ireland in, in 2016, uh, well, sorry, in 2014. At the time, it was the largest tech conference in the world. Over 30,000 people were there. And I was asked by numerous people on the ground, you know, you're from Jamaica. Why are you in Ireland in the freezing cold in November? And why are we here in Ireland in the freezing cold at the tech conference? Why aren't we doing this in Jamaica? And this process started of trying to figure out, well, there's some things missing from even this experience. It's, it's way too large. It's very hard to really filter through who do I want to meet and how am I going to gain value from them or what value can I give? And so the thought started to arise of the importance of a more connected space, right? Another thing that happens when things scale to that level is that you get a lot of separation, right? Because in order to manage that many people, you ultimately have to you know, create these barriers to sell them on the different value props of why they should be in the space. But what that creates is silos. So you know, being, being from Jamaica and, and living in Jamaica, one of the things I reconnected with while I was there, uh, which funny enough, most people don't know this, but when I did my master's degree in architecture, my thesis actually centered around trying to design a more sustainable, all-inclusive resort. Because we have these mass resorts in Jamaica. Oftentimes, they're disconnected from the local economy. They're disconnected from the theme of the island, right? And, and they almost feel like this world away from... Uh, Jamaica itself, right? So it's like you're going to a foreign place while, while you're in Jamaica. And the thought came that an all-inclusive resort could almost serve as a campus where what was happening in Dublin when I was there was that with 30,000 people, everybody was going in different directions every evening, right? People were trying to figure out, well, where do I have coffee? Where do I have breakfast? How can I connect with this venture capitalist in the night? Do I go to dinner at this place? And we're all foreigners to this, to this area, right? So the thought came that if you did this at an all-inclusive resort, then you have kind of this captured environment. Nobody has to go anywhere. And you could really break through a lot of the barriers that people struggle with but don't really know how to solve or articulate when it comes to connecting. So the big core of Tech Beach, as Kyle pointed to earlier, is community. But beyond community, it's really about ensuring that people are able to connect in a way that they can share value and drive an exchange that really creates impact. And that's ultimately what we have now, right? We're in this campus-style environment, is how we tend to term it. And we operate a community that has some key value systems, right? Nobody, people are not paid to be at Tech Beach. And that's an important value proposition of the organization because what we feel like when it comes to speakers is that when you're paid, ultimately, it's an appearance. Your time is slotted and then you're gone, right? And there's no real interaction with the audience. So one of the things we get from people oftentimes is that you know, they, they feel overwhelmed by the reality that in Tech Beach, when the speakers walk off the stage, anybody can walk up to them, yeah. right? Because we operate a no hierarchy, no VIP system. There's no VIP ticket for Tech Beach, right? Yeah, exactly. So a, a beautiful example of that was, or was yesterday and even beyond that, right? Uh, i give you two great examples. Richie, yesterday, phenomenal presentation. Uh, Richie, Richie Etwaru. Richie Etwaru. Richie Etwaru <laughs> gave a phenomenal presentation. It was like 
the Matrix meets Minority Report, Iron Man in real life. And so people were absolutely blown away. I got, while I was there, I was getting messages. Can you get a time to meet Richie? Can I please meet Richie? Can you let me know when Richie's available? I responded to each. When Richie comes off the stage, you can talk to him. <laughs> every one of them. I saw everyone talking to him and, and, and building relationships in that way. And, and that is the environment, that is the brand, that is the energy that we've built. A few years ago when we brought Jack Dorsey, founder of Twitter, that time he was CEO. Uh, Jack came here, did an interview between Kirk and myself. When Jack came off stage, there was no VIP exit that he couldn't interact with the audience. Jack was in the audience, answering questions, meeting with people, taking pictures, and staying much beyond his allocated time. And that is the energy and that is the ethos of what we've designed. So imagine a young entrepreneur from the Caribbean has lived here all his life <coughs> or her life, never left the island that they're from or, or haven't done so frequently, etc. Is trying to do something different because they've been exposed to a different world based on what they see online. And I always say to people, our generation interacts very differently to generations before because of the impact of or the intersection with social media and these different platforms that have come into our worlds. So even you know, the question of Kirk and Kyle connecting, this is very unusual. We don't live in the same place. Kyle is from Trinidad, I'm from Jamaica. Our business from day one has operated as a completely remote, completely distributed team business. So you know, even the other day I got this question from somebody saying, who on your team do I ask you know, certain things about Montego Bay? And I said to them, well, that's a tough one because none of my team is from Montego Bay. So nobody would, would really be able to answer you. In fact, our team lives in, you know, between the US, people live in St. John, the folks who live in Barbados, you know, members of the team live in Trinidad. There are a few who live in uh, Kingston. And am I capturing everywhere? Uh, I don't know where St. John is though. <laughs> St. John Thomas. in the U USVI. Okay. Uh, but you know, the, the reality that in our generation, we had to build something in a very different format than anything that people who we knew, right, had an understanding of how to do. Um, it's a lot easier to traverse the US and these other markets than it is the Caribbean. So we built this thing in, in, to in total separation. We were in the Zoom generation well before the pandemic, right? But the, the major point being that in having to apply that kind of thinking and that approach, what we tried to create was a space where that entrepreneur who's never experienced anything like this, right, uh, but who is dreaming, who feels like I have something that could impact this region, I have something that could become profitable and could grow, has the opportunity to connect with everything that they've seen online for you know, years of their lives, the things that they've read on TechCrunch, the things that they've read in you know, the Wall Street Journal and Forbes and all these big global publications. And the thing that I generally say to people is, we have entrepreneurs in our market who are building companies on the basis of visions that they've seen outside of here, but they're never able to actually connect with the people who are building those visions and ultimately, what Tech Beach does is gives them a space to do so meaningfully, to do so without any level of separation, right? And to do so in pure dignity because no one is operating as if they are Above. up here when you are down here. Inside Tech Beach, everyone is on a level playing field. Yeah. I think, I think something that's really important as well, two things. One is, a lot of our community comprise of corporate leaders, managers from around the region. And within the last few years especially, they've been tasked with the mandate of digital transformation across every aspect of their business. Whether you're a marketer, you're an, you're an executive leader, head of operations, you are, you are in, 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 in privacy data, you're in sales. Every aspect of the business is impacted by technology. But our education system, unfortunately, has, is not at the place where 
these leaders are able to tap into to be able to get the knowledge, to be able to make the decisions that they're able to make. Tech Beach acts as that catalyst for their relationships, their knowledge and growth. And so people enter into spaces here with challenges, with problems, and are able to tap into their counterparts that are doing amazing things, tackling problems at significant scale within the US, within Latin American markets. And it's, it's amazing to see that happen. And it's amazing to hear how they feel truly impacted by the opportunity to connect with people that share similar problems as them and be able to distill it down to practical, practical steps that they can do and take back to their businesses. The other thing is our diaspora. A lot of, a lot of our government across the region talk about the Caribbean diaspora. We all know that the Caribbean diaspora is bigger outside than it is inside. What we do lack is a connection point, a meeting place, a platform that brings who, the best of who we are within the region and the best of who exist within our diaspora. And, and that is what we aim to do with Tech Beach. Create that platform that allow people from all over the world to convene every year, but not only in Jamaica, as we continue to build plat our platforms within Miami, within Barbados, within Trinidad, and we're making strong steps to step into Latin American markets and do things within Mexico, within Colombia, and be able to really convene the Latin American and Caribbean connection and become that community, that platform that convenes global technology across the world that from people from our region. That is something that's truly exciting and that's the vision of what we're trying to accomplish with this aspect of the business, the community side. I think there's two other pieces that really have come into play uh, as we've, within the last three years. One is our education platform. Our education platform, TBR Lab, connects, all right, yeah, that's not one second. All right, yeah, cool. So within the last three years, through a partnership with IDB Lab and the DMZ out of Toronto, TBR Lab was birthed. TBR Lab is our education pillar. We seek to provide an education program that has a strong curriculum around startups, corporates, and government, where we allow them to connect with their counterparts and leaders globally and tackle problems and, and speak about problems across multiple verticals and really help them to really get that education understanding and that relationships, those relationships that they really need to help transform their businesses in a really truly meaningful way across an eight week program, but across a broader community that supports each other throughout the year. So I guess we can close by just <laughs> kind of cementing what it is that we've built and where we're going, right? Uh, I think it's why people find Tech Beach so impactful is because we seemingly have created something where there was nothing, right? The reality of the Caribbean tech ecosystem is that while there were some active players in the market trying to energize the space because they had the vision of what technology could do for the region, uh, you know, we, we live in a very stubborn place and, and Kyle and I still experience this on a on a very regular basis, right? So despite the pace with which you see things moving on in other markets, the Caribbean takes a bit more nudging and a bit more hand-holding and nurturing to get us to where we, where we want to go. So I think people look at some of our achievements as, as game changers because what we are managing to do is convince some of the largest entities in the world, global players like Google Better. and AWS and Meta and Microsoft. Microsoft to take bets on people who, as far as their bottom line is concerned, haven't, you know, they haven't really seen a measure of, well, this is where this can go or this is where this is going, right? And clearly, in operating a business even in our, for ourselves, you realize that, look, you do have to spend most of your time focused on the places where you draw revenue. So taking time to 
invest into a place that you're not sure of is, is a, a pretty big bet for any corporation, especially at that scale, right? These companies don't have presence in the Caribbean for the most part, but what we've sold them on is uh, a vehicle that allows them to connect in a way that gets them to understand the region quickly, gets them to connect with the right people, and gets them to start seeing traction in the market without you know, a, a level of intensity. Because we're not saying Google is gonna build their next headquarters in Jamaica tomorrow, but we are saying we want to see a path towards you know, a company like that setting up station in the region and for entrepreneurs, investors, uh, you know, other players, stakeholders in, an, in the ecosystem to see where they can benefit from that kind of shared future, right? So as Kyle pointed to, our program TBR Lab has accelerated over 100 uh, entrepreneurs in just over a year. We've done so in partnership with all of those companies that I've mentioned and the ones that he mentioned earlier, IDB Lab, et cetera, who have supported us, the Development Bank of Jamaica and such. We have seen those companies get to a place where they've raised well over 50 million US dollars, which you know, in 2019, that was unheard of when we were doing Tech Beach uh, the, the last time before the pandemic. And so those entrepreneurs have really created a space where they are solving big problems in the Caribbean, and we're finally seeing capital come to the table to support them not just from the local market, which to us is a huge game changer as well. There's a liberation happening where people are managed, managing to source capital and resources from all over the place. Chief, you're running. Okay, well finish. No, no close. You were running before I didn't know. <laughs> cool. So, <laughs> in closing, uh, you know, Tech Beach is really about bringing together a global community to the Caribbean to drive big ideas and solve big problems in a market where we have not seen benchmarks for doing so in the way that we have seen technology companies broach issues in other places. And the future of Tech Beach is that the programs continue to grow in terms of learning and development and that level of impact. And the next evolution of, of Tech Beach going beyond events is building out this ecosystem to where we have a map across this market, as, as Kyle would have pointed to. And then the next step is Tech Beach itself starting to invest directly into companies. We, we saw our first success in that regard with Edufocal, which is a company that came to the first Tech Beach and has been here ever since. They've matured from participant to partner and did a successful IPO earlier this year. And what you will see coming forward is that we look to identifying more entrepreneurs who we can support not only through capital, but through leveraging this community uh, to, towards building out the, the vision that they have um, and, and driving transformation in the market. Cool. Tech Beach is a place where people connect across their passions and not over their positions. That's it. So, okay, we had a. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fair. Let's do it one by one. So vote of thanks to who first? Okay. So over the last few days, we've had an amazing set of panelists and more to come. Uh, you know, we just want to give our thanks to everyone who has made this so very special. Uh, this Tech Beach has been hosted by Dr. Terry Carell alongside Malik Yoba. You know, uh, just search that name. Everybody knows him, right? And, and we've been blessed with that um, difference that they've brought to, to, to this Tech Beach. In addition to that, Kyle shared, you know, Richie Etwaru, who we think is going to go into places that people have never seen, uh, you know, gave a keynote here to showcase a technology that he has invented as a Guyanese-born entrepreneur to the world here in Jamaica before anywhere else. And, and we think that is huge. Um, we also want to thank all of our 
other speakers and, you know, getting into names, John Coetzee, who comes there every year, um, you know, Jeff Pulver, uh, Zachary Harding from, from Delta, who's, who's from Jamaica. Um, you know, all of Lucy these people. Lucy Guo. Lucy Guo, who's, who's going to be on stage today. Who else you want to mention? Well, like, you can't say it today because it's not today. No. <laughs> Lucy <laughs> Guo. Um, XIE from, from Google. We've had a number of, we've, we've had a number of, people from Google here with us, uh, Jackson George from Capital G, uh, you know, Richard Isaac from Real Decoy. So we, we have a lot of people that we want to thank for giving their presence and giving their time to being here and making an impact. Lisa Godwin from the New York Times, uh, you know, Camilla Taylor from Gusto, who has come to, both of those names have come to every single tech beach. Yeah. Jumping into stakeholders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think when you begin naming names, they're going to get tough. So, it's going to get edited, yeah. bro. So just... Cool. Yeah. Yeah, let's... <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, we want to we wanna give a special thanks to our partners, because without them, this wouldn't be possible. We want to give a special thanks as well to the people that make the community because without the community and the